The Google file system is a scalable distributed file system. GFS is the backbone that allowed Google to access large amounts of data that would not fit on a single disk fast and in parallel. Examples are crawled copies of the web, long videos, and giant log files. These often need to be accessed for analysis or to perform a computation, and since they are so big, to process them in parallel, GFS breaks down files to chunks and distributes them across many machines, so all the different ranges of the file can be accessed by multiple machines at the same time. GFS assumes that there are many concurrent reads and writes, and that the vast majority of the writes are appending or adding bytes to the end of the file instead of overriding a byte range within the file. For example, videos are often uploaded to YouTube, but they are rarely changed once they are added. GFS also makes the decision to sacrifice some consistency to optimize for performance and availability. The rationale here is that if a user searches something on Google, they are not going to notice that one search result item out of 20,000 is missing or is the wrong one. So let's see how GFS distributes large data across machines in such a way that enables parallel reads and writes. First, we have a cluster of servers. Each of these servers is called a chunk server because it is going to store many chunks of different large files. Originally, the default size of each chunk is 64 megabytes, and each one is stored as a plain Linux file on the chunk server. Since GFS distributes data across thousands of disks on thousands of servers, each chunk is stored on three different chunk servers as replicas for availability. So if there is a network partition or an outage and one chunk server is not responding, the chunk can be accessed through any of the other two replicas. Next, we have the master. The master saves in memory the metadata of all the chunk servers. First, it stores a mapping of file names and lists of their chunk IDs, and it also stores a mapping of each chunk ID and its version number, a list of the chunk servers that store the replicas for that chunk, and which one is the primary replica. Now, since we have many concurrent reads and writes from many clients, the master needs to maintain minimal communication with each client so it doesn't become a bottleneck. Because of that, each time a client makes a request to read or write a portion of a file, the master will only return the primary replica to the client so that it can make the requests against the primary and not through itself. The requests of the client will likely not be a request to read or write a single chunk. So the request of each client will be translated into multiple read and write operations, each on a single chunk. All the metadata can be wiped if all the master replicas crash because of some large outage. And then GFS won't know where to direct reads and writes. So for fault tolerance, in addition to replicating and saving in memory, the master will also persist the mapping of file names to their lists of their chunk IDs and the latest chunk versions by making a checkpoint of this state periodically. Between the checkpoints that persist the mapping and all the chunk versions, the master will create logs for writes when a new version of a chunk is created. This way, when the master crashes, it can pick up from the latest checkpoint and then run through all the writes that were logged to get back to the correct state. Metadata like the mapping of chunk IDs to a list of chunk servers does not need to be persisted because when the master is back up after a crash, it will ping all the chunk servers and ask which chunks they have and will recreate that mapping in memory. After the user receives the information of the primary replicas from the master for the chunks it wants to read or write, the GFS client will cache the primary so the user won't need to send requests against the master again in a subsequent read or write on those chunks. On a read, the client tells the master the file name and the portion of the file it wants to read by specifying an offset. The master returns the ID of the chunk and the list of servers containing it, and then the client requests that chunk from the chunk server based on the ID, and the chunk server returns the data. On the right, the client asks the master for the location of the chunk servers that hold the replicas of the chunk, and which one is the primary that will facilitate the write. If there is no primary designated yet, the master will look for which chunk server contains the latest version of the chunk that it persists with logs and checkpoints. Out of the replicas that return the chunk version that the master holds, 
the master will pick a primary replica, create a new version of the chunk which will correspond with the version of the chunk when the write is complete, and send the chunk version to the primary and secondary replicas, and then return the primary back to the client. The client caches that information so it won't need to ping the master again, and then pushes the data to all the replicas. Once the replicas receive the data, they save it in memory. Once all the replicas acknowledge receiving the data, the client asks for the data to be written, and this is where the primary replica comes into play. Since at the scale of GFS, there could be many concurrent writes from multiple clients for the same chunk, the primary assigns consecutive serial numbers to each write operation, which provides the necessary serialization, and then applies the mutations according to that serial number order. Then, the primary forwards the write request to all secondary replicas, and each secondary replica applies mutations in the same serial number order that was assigned by the primary. Next, the secondary replicas reply the primary that they completed the mutations with either a success or a failure. When all secondary replicas reply to the primary, the primary will return to the client. If the primary replica failed to perform the mutations, then it would not have forwarded the serial order of mutations to the secondaries and the client will receive an error message. If any of the secondary replicas fail to perform the mutations, then the write will also return an error message, even though the primary and possibly a non-zero amount of secondaries were able to update their chunks with the write. At this point, GFS becomes inconsistent, but the client will be aware of it. In this case, the failed mutation will be re-attempted, and if the failure persists, the chunk may be completely moved to another set of chunk servers, and the write will be re-attempted from the first mutation so consistency can be restored. These are some of the main highlights of the Google file system. There are many other things that GFS does to improve its fault tolerance and ability to recover in case of the master's failure at different times, or choosing a chunk value that will be large enough so that all the metadata would fit into a single master replica. The design decision to stick with a single master helps with simplicity and has multiple advantages, but the biggest disadvantage is that it becomes the file system's weak point in certain conditions, and this is the main limitation of GFS. If you want a free 12-week lead code prep plan with a complete set of questions along with summaries of papers and tech blog articles for distributed systems and best practices, you can check out the link below.